What do you think the biggest thing we've learned now it being middle of August since March about the connections between uh, COVID-19 and gastrointestinal symptoms? Obviously, although, it, although receptors for the ACE2 um, uh, um, enzyme are present throughout the digestive tract and it actually may account for some of those findings such as the loss of taste and smell. Um, and we do know there are receptors along the gut in, in every organ for COVID, um, for the SARS-2, SARS COVID, uh, SARS-2 uh, virus. Um, we don't see live virus excreted in the stool. We see viral particles, but they don't tend to be large. Although there are rare cases of liver enzyme abnormalities, there are rare cases of pancreatic enzyme abnormalities. And of course, patients may present with some nausea or diarrhea. It's usually not a severe GI presentation early. There are some potential late events. In the patients who have severe COVID um, reactions and develop um, the inflammatory component of COVID, these are the people who go on to the severe pneumonias and can develop blood clots and such. Once they get to that stage, those, those other complications can rarely affect the gut as well. So it's a, you can have ischemic disease of the gut due to blood clots, but those are not very common. The most common manifestations are loss of taste and smell, mild uh, diarrhea, mild nausea, um, those are the, the more frequent things. Now, in terms of, of patients who, are, who already have IBD, they already have Crohn's or ulcerative colitis, are we seeing uh, any trends in terms of outcomes? Same distribution as the general population for severe infections. In other words, um, the main risks for um, hospitalization pneumonia and ventilator or death are the same in the general population. Older age, obesity, diabetes, hypertension. The medicines, aside from high doses of steroids and the diseases themselves, do not appear to predispose to severe infections. Okay, perfect. Um, is there are there, there's gaps all over the place in what we understand about this virus. Is there any gaps specifically with how um, the gastro symptoms present that we, we just don't have a handle on right now? Well, I think all of them together, but I just don't think, you know, we, we've put it under the microscope, right? And we're not coming up with primary GI bad disease. You know, we have lots of viral gastroenteritis in the world, right? You know, Norwalk agent, rotavirus, and anything. So if anything, this looks like a mild viral gastroenteritis as far as the GI tract is concerned. 